In military, we try to think of different military concepts and doctrinal approach to how wars are fought. And we try to come up with ways to describe them that are different from each other and that have explanative power. So for example, conventional warfare, if I tell you what that is, you probably have a picture of tanks and artillery and conventional armies fighting each other, right? And in regular warfare, you probably have a picture of what? Insurgency, paramilitaries, non-regular formations. And if I tell you terrorism, you probably have a pretty good sense of what terrorism is too, right? So what is hybrid warfare? <laughs> Вот самолёт, самолёт мы бахнули тоже сейчас сушку брать. Вот у нас же букем получили, вот так. Хочу звернути вашу увагу, що на цьому кінці називаємо не інцидент, не катастрофа, а терористичний акт. Flight MH17 crashed because of a 9N314M warhead detonated outside the airplane above the left side of the cockpit. This warhead fits the kind of missile that is installed on the Buk surface-to-air missile system. The idea of hybrid warfare really emerged to look at adversaries that are by and large adversaries who fall into the irregular warfare domain, but use conventional capabilities and integrate, let's say, irregular warfare, conventional warfare, and perhaps things like terrorism in the same battle space. It's funny, you cannot really like, uh, how do you say, you cannot really feel it on people. Like when, when you're flying, for instance, when you sit in a plane, you don't really see these uh, very depressed faces. They don't seem very stressed compared to normal. Like when last time I flew here, it was kind of the same, the same mood. This is, I would expect maybe to feel that, that people are really stressed this time because it de developed so much. But, uh, yeah. Maybe that's just normal psychology. That's how you react to, some, to stuff like that. trigger, we didn't have mm, reasons. Maidan was, uh, a, well, in the start Maidan was uh, not only a revolution, but it was about corruption, getting the leaders to stand down and trying to fight the corruption from inside. Haben ja bereits gesagt, auf ihrem in Anführungszeichen Territorium fänden diese Wahlen gar nicht statt nach dem Motto. My perception even being a TV journalist is that the 
watching the news doesn't help you to get a clear picture on what's going on, for example, in Ukraine. Well, I have to laugh because that's in a way um, making my, uh, putting my role into question. All right, and now the ritual. Hmm? And now the ritual. Another? The ritual. The ritual that we have. Oh, okay. Selim, sigara versin orada. İnternet kesilir burada lan, vermeseydim. Thank you. Were you here? Yeah, were, you, were you here? No, I wasn't here, but my friend was here. Sniper shot the, the windows, first hit the wall and stuff. It was very dangerous. Thank you very much. Right. It makes me feel really uncomfortable, if I'm honest, to have only this short frame talk about something that is so complicated. Developments in Ukraine are based on 23 years of post-Soviet development. Я вот всегда плачу, вот когда я вот вспоминаю об этих, ну, мне очень трудно себя сдержать просто, понимаете? Я вот смотрю на этих ребят молодых. Ну, я еще это не пережила просто. Так. If you see, if you look at the picture, it's a point of view. Myself, I decided to shoot like that, okay, with a 35 millimeter and a, with a 15 millimeter. Okay, but if I take a wide angle, you see what I mean? The, where is the screw? Nobody has the screw. It's just a question of uh, point of view. It's a point of view. Двадцать вторые зимние Олимпийские игры в Сочи объявляю открытыми. I think we're in play. Good. So, uh, I don't think Cleach should go into the government. I don't think it's necessary. I don't think it's a good idea. Well, in terms of him not going into the government, just let him sort of stay out and do his political homework and stuff. I can't remember if I told you this or if I only told Washington this. He's now gotten both Sari and Ban Ki-moon to agree that Sari could come in Monday or Tuesday. Okay. So that would be great, I think, to help glue this thing and have the UN help glue it. And, you know, fuck the EU. The crisis in Ukraine, which was basically provoked and created by some of our Western partners, is now being used to revive this military bloc, NATO. We will be forced, absolutely forced, to take appropriate measures in response to ensure our safety. In the beginning we labeled it revolution. After that we stopped using that word because we didn't know what it was. Crimea totally took the revolution out of it. Suddenly Maidan became a symbol of something different. After the collapse of the Soviet Union, Russia was essentially stuck with nuclear deterrence and a paper army. The army could not be counted to really provide any sort of buffer in a conflict for escalation, right? You'd have conflict and then you'd basically have to escalate to nuclear first use pretty fast because your army was not a dependable force. 
And since then, things have turned around. And here, you can see, if you're thinking about conventional deterrence, you're not going to trade missiles for missiles with the United States, because the United States has way more missiles. So you're going to go after non-military targets or something else of significance, right? So it was completely clear that they are professional soldiers. This morning, more unidentified pro-Russia armed militias patrolling the streets of Crimea's capital. Other medias were riding Russian soldiers, but we had no confirmation of that. <laughs> Vladimir Putin denied that there were any Russian troops in Crimea. You US... really denied there were troops in uh, Crimea? Yes, he did. I remember one guy when I asked him, so where are you from? At Kudavui, he said, from heaven and pointed up there. You can't be 100% sure. Think about Blackwater, think about uh, so-called private armies. Uh, they can just give them uniforms and send them anywhere. The motion added that the Kremlin had initiated an undeclared hybrid war against Ukraine, including the use of regular and irregular forces, propaganda, economic pressure, energy blackmail and political... We were believed that Russia has some kind of new military doctrine called hybrid warfare, nonlinear warfare, which is not the case. Russia uses classical political warfare, all right? And these are tools and instruments of national power coming together, and you can consider them to be everything from political subversion, propaganda, even covert operations. And there's nothing Russia does differently from most of our interactions during the Cold War, and not just from what Russia does, but what from, let's say, China or other powers do against each other. The Assistant Secretary of State has come under fire in Congress. Victoria Newland struggled to defend the activists in Kiev who have benefited from Washington's support. Have a good, good listen to this. The vast majority of those who participated on the Maidan were peaceful protesters. The question is, were there neo-Nazi groups involved in that? There were, as I said, almost every color of Ukraine was represented, including some, the ugly, including the some ugly colors. The answer is yes, then.
алгоритм сам по собі, як ідеологія, виступає проти будь-якого імперіалізму, проти глобалізму, проти лібералізму, а саме ці речі зараз падають в світі. Ми хочемо здобути українську державу. Подобається це комусь ні, це вже така справа. When things started to escalate and you see like the conflict going on in Crimea, people in Crimea, people in Donetsk or people in Kharkiv didn't understand what was going on in, in Maidan. In eastern regions of Ukraine, they didn't understand this revolution happening in their own country. I watch a lot of Russian television in Crimea Honestly, I was shocked. I was completely shocked. Um, also talking to Russian colleagues in Crimea, they sound brainwashed. Здравствуйте. Это стоп фейк ньюс. Даже по провержению неправдивой информации о событиях в Украине. Возможно, журналисты, которые распространяют эту дезинформацию, они просто немного непрофессиональны, не объективны в силу своих убеждений. Там этому мешает гостиница Украина. Ну и вот здесь мы тоже. Вот консерватория, вот место расстрела. А вот здесь пропаганда, которая more effectively done. For example, recently we've seen the uh, pictures uh, taken in the morgue in Slovensk, which is just full of corpse of uh, killed people, but the problem is that the morgue is not in Slovensk. It was um, taken in Mexico during the um, drug war. Ukraine usually have nothing to counterbalance that. Uh, because Ukrainian television was not that much powerful, with much less money, and um, so these two markets were never comparable to each other. So, of course, people in Ukraine were consuming a lot of uh, Russian programming, and uh, if you would put, you know, bits of propaganda here and there, you would definitely find them finding audience for that. Президента Януковича з України у ньому йшлося про анексію Криму та окупацію східних областей, починаючи з Харкова. У створенні такого плану, начебто, брав участь російський олігарх Константин Малафеєв, який обґрунтував необхідність війни втрученням у геополі. If you see and hear and read the same news just bumping on you from different sides, how resistant you can be to all this information. In the scenes of escalating violence in eastern Ukraine, this one is particularly sobering. The Ukrainian riot police sent in to remove pro-Russian militants from the city of Donetsk were instead removed themselves. Комфорт хотел? Да, да. Али пак пускана. Твой пак пускана. Um, I would like to hear your advice about hybrid warfare. Um, perhaps the only person in this room that um don't really understand what does it mean and um, you know. Right in February 2014, a lot of Russia watchers in the field when Russia um, invaded with special forces and very rapidly annexed Crimea said, this is some new form of hybrid warfare, <coughs> and hybrid warfare kind of took off like wildfire, and uh, good slogans are really nice and because analysis is hard, but um, it means nothing, okay? And so hybrid warfare became literally everything. Conven Russia's conventional invasion was hybrid warfare. 
uh, Russian propaganda and media became hybrid warfare. Uh, political subversion, financing, mobilization of compatriot groups, hybrid warfare. Strategic bomber overflights became hybrid warfare. I mean, literally, we got to a place where uh, everybody liked hybrid warfare because it had what they wanted to talk about. So ultimately, what often is termed to be Russian hybrid war in Ukraine is not an integration of these different types of warfare in the battle space or as part of any coherent doctrine or approach to Ukraine. What happened was, in eastern Ukraine, Russia sought to pay the lowest price possible to bid in as low as they could to achieve a particular political outcome, which was make Ukraine agree to a decentralization or federalization scheme that would lead to a political partition of Ukraine and prevent Ukraine's interim government from being able to move the country into any kind of strategic direction. And I'd argue it would prevent them from implementing real reforms as well. <laughs> and those bids didn't work. And so you see a sequence of improvisations and an escalation of the conflict uh, with Russia paying a higher price and getting more involved than they wanted to at each phase. <laughs> and then eventually giving up and just invading. And there's nothing Russia does differently from most of our interactions during the Cold War, and not just from what Russia does, but what from, let's say, China or other powers do against each other. No, Варшавский договор прекратил существование. Нет, зачем-то нужно постоянно расширять инфраструктуру НАТО, двигаться к российским границам. Понимаете, абсолютное наплевательское отношение к нашей позиции. Ну, во всем. Since the collapse of the Soviet Union, the West had sought to offer Russia many advantages of integration both with itself and to a range of regional and international organizations and institutions. And that is, we want to reset our relationship. And let's, do it, let's do it together. So we will do it together, okay? <laughs> we worked hard to get the right Russian word. Do you think you, we got it? You got it wrong. I got it wrong. Yeah. <laughs> it should be Perezagruska. Ah. And this says uh, Peregruska, which means overcharge. <laughs> well, we won't let you do that to us, I, I promise. belief and hope that an emerging democratic Russia would see the benefits over that of pursuing traditional vectors of Russian foreign policy, both in its near abroad and vis-a-vis -vis the West. We were making great progress towards this. The West was not able to offer Russia that which Russian leaders would see as more valuable than the pursuit of traditional Russian foreign and national security policy. Ukraine became such a real conflict for Russia because Russia as a country has stuck to traditional vectors of Russian foreign policies, and it has the same geopolitical problems that Russia has always had. Pre-Soviet Union Russian Empire had the same problems, okay? Too large a territory to govern for the amount of military power and population you have. The need to stabilize your near abroad in order to create buffers between you and your potential adversaries and the fundamental foreign policy drive to impose limited sovereignty on your neighbors. Not to own or control them necessarily as an empire, but to make sure that you have a say in their strategic orientation. I have many times about this. There is a difficult political situation in the inside. And most of all, the opposition, which is now in power, in a democratic way, with the help of the elections, came to power. And that's all. We worked with them, the same as we worked with them. And so the stakes for Russia became existential, which is why it basically abandoned all adherence to international norms and simply first invaded and annexed Crimea, and then sought to reverse the loss in Ukraine. 
terrorism and an act of war. A commercial airliner shot out of the sky by a missile. Ukraine and Russia blaming each other for the crash, but the Ukrainian government now releasing intercepted audio of Russian separatists talking about shooting down the plane. The plane fell apart in the air, in the area of Petropavlovskaya mine. The first 200. We have found the first 200, a civilian. Well, what do you have there? In short, it was 100% a passenger aircraft. Uh, hey, do you speak English? Uh, I am from Denmark. I'm a journalist. I would like, uh, I would like to come and see uh, your center. No, she doesn't speak any English. That's horrible. Fuck. Fuck, what am I doing here now? See you later. Okay, bye. Uh, what kind of uh, what kind of money do you get from the government to finance this place? Do you get donors from international support also? Один только вид это компенсация затрат вынужденных переселенцев на аренду жилья, но она очень недостаточная, там 400 или 800 гривен и все. Government pays 400 as a compensation for being for being forced to resettle. Okay. То есть это очень мало. For being forced to move in. 400 гривнас. A month? Uh, one, yeah. one time? Okay, okay. Wow. Yeah, that's nothing. И вот с международными со многими организациями есть такая проблема. Вот они приезжают, их представители вот мониторят ситуацию, да, они вот приезжают, допустим, из Азии, из Африки, где там 10 тысяч людей, грубо говоря, в лагере от голода, и оно видно сразу. Вот это гуманитарная проблема. Они приезжают в город, где есть электричество, где ходят троллейбусы, магазины, и они не видят людей на улице и говорят, а где здесь катастрофа гуманитарная. Да? То есть, а эти люди просто, они живут по домам где-то, да, они вот рассеяны по всему городу, у них на самом деле не хватает денег. У них очень мало денег на оплату жилья, на нормальное питание, на какие-то одежду детям и так далее, и так далее. Hotline, uh, government hotline. So this is your number, and then yes, yes. Uh, yeah, I'll send you an email. Yeah, take care and yeah, be safe. <laughs>